Hello, hello, welcome everybody. This is the City Watch is the build. Uh, mostly strength, a smidge of faith, some vigor. Uh, I would recommend reallocating the points actually, but I'll talk about that in a bit. But first off, this is the City Watch. I will be showing the build on screen. Uh, I recommend you modify it, like I said before, but the City Watch is based off of uh, it was just a town guard, essentially. I was inspired by the Watch novels written by Terry Pratchett, a part of his Discworld, ser or his Discworld universe. And the Watch follows uh, Captain or Commander Samuel Vimes, a uh, bitter, gritty, but well-to-do grouchy old man who's a t essentially a town guard but a good policeman at heart and so that's kind of what i wanted to emulate they're fun novels they're comedy they're fantastic go read them uh read all of terry pratchett's Discworld. you won't regret it very british but very funny witty uh if a sentence is not a joke it is a setup for a joke it's that chock full and there are so many different places you can begin reading the series. You could start in publication order. You could start in the order that the author recommends. You can pick one of the uh, multiple series that are throughout Discworld and just follow that. <laughs> There's so much you could do. Here I'm showing off the sweaty inventory. I like to have options. And I liked having options before I even saw everyone online, all the YouTubers, the major PvP ones, making all their fancy inventories, but we're going to get into it. Um, yeah, so I switched to the Dagger Medallion because I felt a parry coming on as a blue. I was summoned as a blue right before I got to the major invading, so this was my first uh, step when I started recording footage. I, was me I meant to do invasions, but... As the first setup is a blue, and what do you know, it's a blue harassing these poor Tarnished with a great bow, and he's got a, a mini boss, a field boss beside him. And uh, don't you know, he doesn't have a great bow license. So we're here to teach him what for. You really need a license to operate the great bow. And so here we are, we're the police, we're here to mete out justice. And uh, I really like the Town Guard archetype. I thought it was a lot of fun. I made this character, of course, as a... Uh, to honor the Watch series. I need to finish reading, I'm only like four books in, but I'm loving it. And uh, I wanted to make somebody who protects others, a, a defensive kind of strength build, if I could. And I could be wearing heavier armor, of course. I've only got like 89 poise or something. Oh, lame. Some people don't even get 89 poise in their whole lives. Poise privilege will be a topic for a video that I will never publish. <laughs> but yeah, we smack him with the great bow. And we're playing a kind of a supportive role. But yeah, I just, I liked the idea of being a grumpy town guard who's one day from retirement and he's just doing this to get it done. You know? Like, he's gonna do a good job. He's always done a good job. I whiffed the parry, but then the follow up connects. <laughs> and the crit on the, the crit modifier, the Lord Sword Sword, raw physical damage plus the dagger talisman, a thousand damage easy. And I felt bad for that guy because he was doing pretty good as an invader. He wasn't doing so bad. And then we see the, the phantom to the host die right there to a fireball. I hope he killed the boss. But, yeah, I just wanted to be a town guard and to help people out and to crush criminality out. Uh, the character was made to play PvE, mostly, with friends of mine who I was showing the game to. And uh, I wanted to be a capable character, but not an overwhelming character. I wanted to be a character that people saw and went, I can take the town guard. I can kill the town guard. What's a town guard? He's no hero. He's not using the fanciest meta equipment. He's using a sword and board. Sword and board was good in Dark Souls 3. It's uh, it's a little rough. It's a, it takes a lot more brain power to use it adequately in uh, Elden Ring. The good old sword and board. As much as I love it, it's just not the most fantastic especially in a 3v1 in a one-on-one -on -one, you can make it work really well but in a 3v1 you will have some trouble you will have reach trouble you'll have uh stagger damage trouble you'll have all sorts of issues but yeah i really like the city watch i probably should have named it to samuel vimes and more people probably would have got that Actually, no. More people are going to understand City Watch. It sounds like a town guard title, right? Uh, Samuel Vimes was uh, only, you know, 
the it'll only uh, only a handful of people will recognize that name offhand. Though those who do recognize it will be very glad to see it. I was watching a video by uh, Saint Riot the other day, actually, and he had a co-invader show up, but they didn't actually get to the fight. The fight ended before they could show up. But their name was Esme Weatherwax, which is the name of the protagonist from the witches' novels that are written by Terry Pratchett, also in the Discworld universe. Those are very fun books as well. They're all great. They're all good. And the farther you get in any respective series, the better it gets, because Terry Pratchett grew a whole lot as a writer. He started off very competent, and then he just got better. But yeah, trying to get the sword and board to work. I was kiting him into the tree, hoping that the boss was here. When I realized that the boss wasn't going to, you know, bail me out of trouble, I was like, why are they here? Why are they over here if they're not, you know, gonna go defeat the boss? What would possibly be the purpose? certainly beyond me but still they've got me by well they they've, they're chomping at my ankles and I'm just trying to buy time to figure out what I can do about them and invasions end up like this especially if uh, they're very aggressive you can't help but run you'd love to hold your ground and trade blows I'm not the best so as a result, it's hard for me to stand and trade blows. There's some people who can do it really well. I can do it a lot better in 2v1s. 3v1s, it's just there's a little too much going on. But in 2v1s, I can usually hold an area and not run away the whole time. Made the swap to the uh, Nefeli Luz electric taser axe. Um, I'm not a very good policeman. I didn't shout taser repeatedly before deploying it, but, you know, they're human at the end of the day. Uh, another one of these odd one-on-one -on -one fights. I just, I find it so fascinating that the people essentially want a duel, right? They'll hang out by the Church of Ella on their own. They're not doing a, a Taunter's Tongue playthrough where they're playing through the game and then they want lots of invaders, you know? They're just hanging out by the Church of Ella, by that first step there, and they want duels, but they want duels where they have twice as many flasks as the other guy. And granted, I guess it gives you a playing field to learn how to play, because you can make far more mistakes than your opponent. But if you're looking for a sporting fight, I just don't get it. Now, granted, it is a video game and none of these choices are illegal, so whatever sporting is purely subjective. Uh, I kind of miss what they did to Bestial Sling. I understand. It, it got nerfed a handful of patches ago. And I just kind of miss having good uh, pocket sand. You know, stumble somebody. Just, uh, it tickles people now. Unless you are uh, making a build designated for it. Like wielding a, uh, I don't know, a claw mark incantation seal in each hand and then shotgunning alternating. <laughs> Something like that. The auto shoddy. But yeah, I should talk about uh, the stats, because you may have saw the opening stats and been like, oh, 55 Vigor? Yeah, that was a mistake. Don't do that. Uh, you don't really need 70 Strength. The 70 Strength was because I wanted to one-hand uh, Sword and Board and a handful of other weapons. Right? I wanted to have pretty good damage output. If you are two-handing your weapons most of the time, 54 Strength is acceptable. That will, when you two-hand, that'll get you to the, the cap the damage uh, one of the damaged capstones I forget all the terminology it may not even be the soft cap soft cap hard cap I don't really care cap um, but it gets you sufficient damage at 54 strength if you're two-handing your weapon I went for 70 because I wanted to one-hand stuff I would recommend taking like five or more points out of that and putting them elsewhere get your 60 vigor uh, if you're copying this build, get enough points to get probably 24 faith, I would say. Uh, that'll give you access to Barrier of Gold, which will be your Wizard Slayer. Okay, it won't slay the wizard, but it'll make it so wizards only tip yeah. And look at this champion, using the uh, Fire Prelates. <laughs> Great hammer, unironically. And it, it turns out it's pretty good at knocking people back. I had trouble stumbling, and then again, sword board, so kind of had it coming. Uh, honorable policeman uh, dipping his uh, weapon in Nickelodeon green slime before you know his days work his shift I wish I understood or knew uh, British cop uh, 
or UK cop terminology for all their things, I feel like that'd be great to riff off that and have a good bit, but I don't know that sort of things. I live in the US of A, so we just have to kind of, you know, compare it to regular old police work. <clears throat> but yeah, this guy, he put up a good fight. The good old running heavy on the sword and board always throws people off. Straight swords are good. Use them. Um, if you use two, though, you cringe. I'm just joking. That's fine. This was also a fun little fight. But yeah. I, I feel like I've been saying, but yeah, a lot. I'll get better at this. This will take time. This is a stream of consciousness. I mostly wanted to show you that I do the PvP and that I'm going to try to do more of these videos. Uh, showing a particular flavor. The Ordovis Greatsword seems a little fancy for a member of the City Watch, but it's primarily a strength weapon, and it just takes a little faith, which uh, isn't too inconceivable for a lowly town guard. So, the, the two hits following up with the Ash of War, I feel like had I charged it up, it would have finished him off. And hey, that 70 strength got me within 39 points on his health, so it worked out. We throw the frost pot at him for good measure. This was uh, another scary 3v1 where I was certain I was going to die at any given moment. I am not the most competent, courageous, or just... I'm not a, the best invader. I'm okay. I'm average. Astoundingly average. I had a whole slew... What was that? It was a... Uh, miraculously mediocre, astoundingly average, outlandishly everyday, or outstandingly everyday. <laughs> Something stupid. But yeah, the, uh, the Stormhawk Axe. Very good on strength builds, passable on dex builds. It's very good to have as a backdoor or option, or as a last resort for when you're just getting ganged up on. It has so much poison. In my uh, playthrough of the game, my lore through, which is kind of my main focus, uh, episode 48, I do a handful of invasions, and one of the earlier invasions, I think it was the second one, I get absolutely wrecked by somebody using Stormcaller on their weapon, and it has a lot of uh, hyper armor, I couldn't interrupt them, and the Stormhawks, uh, the Stormhawk Axe is that times 10. It's darn impossible to interrupt. You need to bleed or frost the person, it feels like. Um, very little will knock them over. And it does crazy damage, especially when everyone's here rolling and walking in water. Because that affects your resistances a good deal. But just having to juggle three people, it's quite the feat. Even when you have a really good Ash of War, like Thunderstorm. And then there's the fatal mistake. I'm even able to bop him once before he gets away. And, uh, that shows. That goes to show, kids. Crime never pays. All of these just retroactively believe they are all criminals. All these people I've invaded. It'll help my conscience. It'll help your conscience. Bless your heart for watching this video. I shoot the ground there to give myself a little buff. Because for some reason, the Holy Great Arrows buff you and your allies if the arrow lands near you. I don't know why that is. It just is. It's neat, though. So, if you're ever fighting by an eternal dragon, treat it like a stage hazard that's also targeting you, and you'll do a lot better. I kind of ignore it, thinking I have time and space. Uh, big mistake. Let's also try to catch this uh, fellow with his great shield, because he has no great shield license, obviously. And my hope is that I can hit him with the weapon or the Ash of War while he has his guard up, guard break him, and they get a crit. But he's smart. He's one of those people who uses his great shield sparingly. Which, if you're going to use a great shield, use it sparingly. Keep a close eye on that stamina bar. People won't get critical hits off. Of you. I kind of miss the days where you could use a small round shield and block a hit or two in Dark Souls 3. Because in this game, you can block, like, a small hit if you're using a small shield. And you can block a medium hit, maybe, with a medium shield. And then with the great shield, you can block one heavy hit and then you're out. <laughs> The shields have uh, been neutered quite a bit across this game's lifespan because they were very strong when the game came out, especially the larger ones. 
This guy didn't expect me to just keep neutral attacking while he's rolling around me. And I give him the old frost. Not the most effective way to finish somebody off, but... The scythe can be a weapon for a town guard, especially if he is, uh, you know, a farmer by trade. Any town guards, he moonlights as a, as a town guard. <clears throat> But yeah, fun invasions. I had a grand time. It's uh, It feels good when you have a sensible kit, even if you're not using the sweatiest of builds, you know? Not dual Naginatas with bleeds and the Vare mask and the uh, Lord of Blood's exaltation or whatever it's called. There's all sorts of builds that are just designed to do crazy damage immediately. But I was here for flavor. I'm here for fun. I'm doing a strength build and I'm pretending to be a town guard. I'm not even wearing as heavy armor as I could be. My goal was kind of look like a fat, grizzled old man. You know, who may have been strong in his prime, but now has uh, waned with the years. I, this person doing the magic claws with the lifesteal fist. A lot of respect for that. I, I don't know if it works out. I assume that there's some sort of secret damage multiplier for having your weapon buffed and using lifesteal fist. I've seen some people do some crazy damage. I don't know if it's been nerfed yet. Some people with lifesteal fist and some combination are just absolutely able to just melt people. But it's, uh, it's pretty obvious. You see blue claws, uh, you play it safe. Simple. But this co-invader, it looks like he shoots a blast at me, realizes I'm not orange, and he joins my side, which is nice. There's too many reds out there who just attack their fellow red for no more reason other than they are angry, vicious pit bulls that just chomp on anything that they can I'm just notorious. <laughs> I shouldn't say notorious. I have a bad habit of doing the jump with the great bow and accidentally inputting a direction and putting the bow away. I need to get better about that. <laughs> My own thing to work on. But still, I enjoyed being the town guard quite a lot. There's just something funny to me about all these heroes of legend going about and doing what they can to, uh, you know, save the lands between, to gain power or prominence or glory. And just the lowly town guard shows up and just messes them up. Shows them that they're not hot stuff in this tabletop role-playing game. You're level 3 and the town guard's a, a savvy level 15 who's tired of your nonsense. Or whatever. Am I actually a higher level than these fellows? Probably. I'm in, the, I'm in the park, but still. The concept is what brings a smile to my face, and uh, I don't need any other purpose other than it makes me laugh and it makes me smile. Hey! I'm not sure exactly what I will do for the next PvP video, but um, I might show off a more sweaty build just because I have one on hand that would be easy to do recordings with quickly. This fellow was kind of confusing. He was really passive just standing here and he's just like occasionally casting moving lazily i was so lost i was trying to figure out what his thing was and then i see oh he's summoning friends don't you know it's kind of funny how many uh when you do invasions quite a bit how many people seem to act friendly or passive to buy time to bring their friends in to spank you it's you know third generational warfare or some such just it's out there And I probably should have taken pity on him, you know. But at the same time, there's clues. He's got a bleed build. He's got the Mogwin Spear. He is somewhere around level 150. And we're at the first step. That's pretty intentional. Not many people are level 150 at the first step. Unless they're doing a new game plus. But uh, the Golden Tree Sentinel's not down the hill. And they seem intent on staying around this grace for the most part. little clues to help you out 
though. You get enough of the game sense just by playing the game. And I found that watching my own invasions, I was like, wow, I won a lot of those, right? And then I watched it, I was like, wow, I got hit a lot and made a lot of dumb mistakes. And sometimes I won just because I hit the bigger number, or sometimes I won just because I leveled bigger, or something like that. It kind of uh, kicks me down a notch, uh, in a good way. It helps me to remember that I'm not hot stuff, and that I should, you know, exercise a modicum of humility when making these videos. It's kind of uh, a thing in the back of my mind with these videos that I was like, oh, I should always do what I can to maintain the small channel vibe you know always remember my roots treat youtube like a lottery right if i do happen to make money someday off of youtube i should treat it like a lottery and not as in a passive income or as a regular income store the money for a rainy day don't blow it all on nonsense you know and uh remember that people are likely here for elden ring not necessarily because of me if you're here because of me thank you i appreciate it i will try not to let it go to my head there's another instance of the stormhawk axe just delivering unholy amounts of damage and don't you know when his friend is gone and dead he flees he just runs away which is fine you're allowed to run it's a video game you could run all you want um just put it in your name next time so I know what to expect. I'm just joking, but... I mean, his name is Baby... What is that, 2.0? Maybe I had it coming. Ah, oh, that beautiful throw, free aim. I wish I could do that routinely. It's still good, though. And I'm just tired of chasing this guy. You know, this is, uh... This is an example of a dirty cop. If he was a good at being a dirty cop, he would have uh, lost his body cam footage intentionally for pulling out the uh, Geneva war crime stick. But uh, regardless of your build, or maybe not regardless, if you're playing a martial build and you don't have status on at least one weapon, I'd recommend that you do. Just because sometimes people have high latency and they're really hard to get hits off on. And for anyone who's looked into how latency and iframes work with dodging, if people are above a certain latency, it can be almost impossible to hit them. And so, having status can give you that tasty chip that you need. So, I would recommend that. Dex builds can get status pretty easily, especially higher levels. Strength builds can do it. Uh, the only builds that kind of had trouble are probably the pure faith and the pure int builds respectively there, there's you could probably just grab a weapon and just throw poison on it and do just fine but it's very helpful to have all that sort of stuff makes me wonder what's up with these fellows were they trying to get a third it, were they actually hoping to gank invaders in this narrow hallway that's really rude there's nowhere to go it's like a set of stairs and a brief hallway with a little bit of briars in between. And that good old slam. I've only seen like three people use the golem halberd unironically. And one of them was a friend of mine who just kind of used whatever when playing the game. Very casual, good for him. Uh, nothing against that. I think you should use what you want and have fun with it. killed him with the frostpot at the end <laughs> a handful of frostpot ki kills hey. lots of good venues I'm just having a blast being able to make content hopefully my personality becomes uh, more fun with time as I get better at making these videos and having a good stream of consciousness I could script these I suppose or I could uh, get some notes beforehand just didn't have a lot to talk about at least not too much. Just enough. Still, if you do mimic the build, please don't go in with 55 bigger. Be bigger, a bigger man than I am. You don't need 70 strength. You can probably get away with 65 or 60. Honestly, you can go as low as 54 if you want to downscale the build to work at like level 125 or 137 uh, or something. You can probably go down to 54 strength. Make sure you get that 24 faith for the uh, barrier of gold so that you can... Uh, Laugh at wizards. This barrier of gold gives you 60% extra magic resistance, which is gnarly. 
and you could probably get away with like what 35 endurance and still be able to wield very heavy weapons and fairly good armor especially if you're using the great jar talisman good armor is important i don't know all of the uh break points for poise that go along with armor i knew them at, during one of the patches one of the earlier patches and that was the patch where like 62 was really good before they uh upscaled all the numbers all the armors below the bracket that the bull goats and the heaviest armors are in and now the break points are just like i don't know i think 89 might be one maybe 92 is probably another uh, I know 101 is an up break point, and that's it. That's kind of like the extent of my knowledge. If there's any earlier break points, I am woefully unaware of them. But being able to trade hits is just so vital um, when you're learning spacing and hitting people. If your spacing's really good and you are a master of movement, you can get away with a little less poise. There's some people who have that nonsense memorized where they know exactly, like, oh, I can poise a hit from a one-handed katana at this break point, and they can, like, do the math on the fly. That's that's not me, unfortunately. I, I mean, the bulk of my channel on YouTube at the moment is just the lore, according to me. <laughs> and this PvP stuff is just fun. I kind of want to show off little characters. This was kind of a sad encounter for them. Uh, I giggled, but I probably shouldn't have. I shouldn't take delight in other people's suffering, but it is a video game and therefore not illegal. So, taking the great bow and shooting at the host. The host has Bloodhound Step. The Phantom died to that barrage, and then I just... I think I hit him with a great bolt at the end there. Maybe I didn't. Maybe it was just the boss, but... I was witness to all of it, and I interrupted the host, uh, his Phantom, getting to the host. Goodness me. I think this is the last invasion of the clip or of the the goodness i cannot speak today collage compilation highlight reel whatever you want to call it don't mind me as i take a sip <sighs> tasty water so this was a fun little experience where uh it dawned on me that there's just stuff that's good and there's stuff that's not good uh, I encourage, of course, using whatever you want, but it just is a night and day difference. The Ordovis Vortex just kind of melts that poor guy there. And it just melts him so easily. And both of them, they didn't have a lot of health. I think they both had a thousand or less, which isn't fantastic. But that's still a good amount of damage to deal in so few hits. Oh, no, this... How many more invasions do we have? I don't have it divvied up. I have the whole timeline that I'm looking at in one big chunk right now. Because I uh, switched editing softwares, and so I exported from the old one while moving on, and so I don't know when one starts, another one ends. I really like this one, though. This invasion in particular. Because this was a rematch. These guys had punked me earlier at the uh, very beginning of the sewer, when it's still Lane Dell, technically, and not the underground roadside. And so this guy's coming after me. I've used Braggart's Roar. And I just hit him with the light attack, and then he just stands there for the heavy, and he's gone. You're supposed to use it the other way around with a Braggard Sword and a Colossal Sword. If you hit him with the heavy, usually it combos into the light. I've yet to actually execute that. I haven't played with him a whole time. But this fellow is just using his shield and not paying attention. And the great arrows take care of him. And I go and uh, make the arrest. <clears throat> Still, very good. Very fun. And uh, I'll show off the build one more time. Sword and board. Uh, I had damage resist. If you go with less strength, you could probably exchange the damage resist for the plus 10 strength. Physic. Uh, magic fortification. You get all those basic little spells for just a small amount of faith. And those magic resistances help with a defensive build. Uh, you can, of course, wear better armor. And you should probably do both. But I did this to look like a fat old guy. But I appreciate you coming out today and watching my video. I'll have more in the works soon. And I love you. Platonically. Bye-bye.